Today, we will study the game theoretic concept of a Nash equilibrium. By the end of this video, you should be able to explain what a Nash equilibrium is and find the Nash equilibrium of simple strategic games. Before we begin discussing how to find the Nash equilibria of a game, let's review the steps to solve a strategic game. The first thing that you need to do is set up your game using either an extensive form or strategic form of the game, and completely define each player's set of strategies, which we call their strategy set. The next step is to determine whether any players have a strategy that is always better, regardless of what the other players do. These strategies are called dominant strategies. If every player has a strictly dominant strategy, then that is the strategy that they are likely to play, and you have solved the game. If looking for dominant strategies doesn't lead you to a solution, the next step is to eliminate strictly dominated strategies. These are strategies that are always worse than some other strategy. You might also eliminate weakly dominated strategies, but be forewarned, doing so may cause you to overlook some of the equilibria that exist in a game. If after going through all of these steps, you still do not have a solution to the game, it is time to look for the Nash equilibria. John Nash proved that every game has at least one equilibrium of this type, so you are guaranteed to find one. In the rest of this video, we will explore how to find pure strategy Nash equilibria of a game. We will save the problem of how to find mixed strategy equilibria for a later video. Okay, let's get to it. We'll start by defining a Nash equilibrium. A strategy profile is a Nash equilibrium of a game if each player's strategy maximizes his or her payoff, given the strategies of the other players in the game. Let's start by breaking down this definition. The first thing to note is that the equilibrium of a game is defined in terms of a strategy profile. Hopefully, you recall from an earlier video that a strategy profile describes one strategy for each player in the game. The next thing to note about this definition is the second part, which states that each player's strategy is optimal, but only given the strategies that the other players are playing. Let's compare this definition to that of a dominant strategy equilibrium, which we studied in an earlier video. In a dominant strategy equilibrium, each player's strategy is optimal regardless of what the other players do. Thus, in a dominant strategy equilibrium, players do not really have to think much about what the other players are going to do, because they have a strategy that is the best for them no matter what. In a Nash equilibrium, each player's strategy is optimal, but conditional on what the other players are doing. Thus, in a Nash equilibrium, each player has to think about what the other players are likely to do. There are two ways to think about Nash equilibria. One way is that at a Nash equilibrium, no player has an incentive to change what they are doing, given what the other players are doing. A second way is that a Nash equilibrium, each player's strategy is a best reply to the other player's strategies. Sometimes, to reflect this property of the equilibrium, we say that a Nash equilibrium is a mutual best response. These two interpretations of the Nash equilibria point to two methods to solve for pure strategy Nash equilibria. The first method, which is based on the idea that at a Nash equilibrium, no player has an incentive to change their strategy, is to go through each possible outcome of a game and ask yourself, at this outcome, given what the other players are doing, does any player have an incentive to change what they are doing? If the answer is no for all players, then that outcome is a Nash equilibrium. If the answer is yes for any player, move on, because that outcome is not a Nash equilibrium. 
Do not assume just because you have found one equilibrium in a game that you are done. We know that every game has at least one Nash equilibrium, but many games have more than one. The next method is to go through a player's possible strategies and for each one, ask yourself, what is the other player's best reply to this strategy? Then, repeat the process for the other players in the game. Using this method, you will uncover the set of strategies in which each player's strategy is a best reply to every other player's strategy, the Nash Equilibria. Let's do some simple examples to illustrate these methods. We'll start with a simple two-player game in which each player has two possible strategies. Let's start with the first outcome, top left. We'll start with player one. Ask yourself, given that player two is playing left, does player one have any incentive to change from top to bottom? Clearly, the answer is no. Since when player two plays left, player one earns three by sticking with top, but makes zero by switching to bottom. We now repeat this process, asking the question from player two's perspective. Given that player one is playing top, does player two have an incentive to change from left to right? Again, we see that the answer is no. Since we've answered no for both players, we've found one Nash equilibrium to this game. However, this does not mean that we are finished. We have three more outcomes to examine. Let's consider the outcome top right and repeat the process, starting with player one again. Given that player two is playing right, does player one have an incentive to change from top to bottom? Clearly, the answer to this is yes. Player one should switch from top to bottom. Since you answered yes for player one, we are done with this outcome and we can rule it out as a possible Nash equilibrium. Hopefully, you see that by the same logic, we can rule out bottom left as a Nash equilibrium as well. Finally, let's take a look at the outcome bottom right. Using the same logic as we used for top left, we see that bottom right is also a Nash equilibrium of this game. Therefore, we have discovered that this game has two pure strategy Nash equilibria, top left and bottom right. At this point, it is probably appropriate to define what a pure strategy is. A pure strategy is a strategy that a player plays 100% of the time. Contrast this with a mixed strategy, which is a strategy in which a player randomly switches between two or more pure strategies. It turns out that this game has a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium in which player one randomizes between top and bottom and player two randomizes between left and right. We will learn how to solve for mixed strategy Nash equilibria in another video. Let's consider another example, this time applying the best reply method. To make things a bit more interesting, we'll make the game more complicated by considering a two-player simultaneous game in which each player has three possible strategies. To use the best reply method, we will start by asking ourselves, for each of player two's possible strategies, what is player one's best reply? Then, we will reverse the process and ask what player two's best replies to each of player one's possible strategies are. Okay, let's get started. If player two plays left, then player one's best reply is top. So we will circle that payoff for player one. If player two plays center, then player one's best reply is middle. If player two plays right, then player one's best reply is top. Now, we repeat the process to find player two's best replies to each of player one's strategies. If player one's strategy is top, then player two's best reply is right. If player one's strategy is middle, then player two's best reply is center. 
Finally, if player 1's strategy is bottom, then player 2's best reply is either left or right, since they each give player 2 the same payoff. Now we're finished. The Nash equilibria are the squares of the table in which both players' payoffs are circled, because at these outcomes, each player's strategy choice is the best, given what the other player is doing. Using the best reply method, we have found two pure strategy Nash equilibria in this game, middle center and top right. I encourage you to verify that at these two outcomes of the game, neither player has an incentive to change their strategy. Thus, whether we use the best reply method or method one, we will always find the same set of pure strategy Nash equilibria. Before we conclude, I want you to note something about this last step. We could have skipped it. Because for player one, top strictly dominates bottom. Thus, we could have eliminated the strategy of bottom for player one before we even started looking for Nash equilibria. If player two believes that player one is rational, player two knows that player one will never play the dominated strategy of bottom. And thus, player two doesn't really need to worry about figuring out a best reply to player one's choosing bottom. To conclude, here are a few notes about Nash equilibria. First, you can be guaranteed that every game, or at least every game that has a finite set of outcomes, has at least one Nash equilibrium. John Nash proved this. It's important to note, though, that not every game is guaranteed to have a pure strategy Nash equilibrium. For some games, the only Nash equilibrium is one in mixed strategies, where players randomize among two or more of their pure strategies. Next, if a game has more than one pure strategy Nash equilibrium, it also has a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. You will learn how to solve for mixed strategy Nash equilibria in another video. It is interesting to note that most, but not all, strategic games have an odd number of Nash equilibria. Thus, if you think you have found all the Nash equilibria in a game, but the number of equilibria you have found is even, there is a good possibility that there is at least one more equilibrium out there that you haven't found yet. Finally, although a Nash equilibrium will never contain a strictly dominated strategy, some Nash equilibrium might contain weakly dominated strategies. You should think about the definitions of strictly and weakly dominated strategies to reason your way to why these two things are true. This concludes this video on how to find the pure strategy Nash equilibria of a game. Thank you for watching.